Hello, this is the mdlug.org group, June 2016. We're going to have Carl talk a little bit. Carl, go ahead. think my cell phone would be adequate. That's well, right. step up to one of these laptops here. Maybe they get those, what are those going? <laughs> well, not, we don't want to install a lamp on one of the laptops. Okay, That's all right. Their property. We yeah, all right. Be careful. <laughs> so what, what kind of environment do you need in order to do this? Would this be a Linux environment okay. or? Well, if you look at the bottom right screen here, I hope you guys can yeah, I can read that. What I'm doing for this demo is I'm starting with a fresh, minimal install of SetOS 6. And the very first thing that I recommend that you do for Linux is you just run the yum-y upgrade. Now, I'm not connected to the internet, so I've done all these preparations ahead of time, all the installations. But um, you do want to make sure that you've got all the most recent updates. And then for Apache, um, everything you need, you'll get by running this, the yum-y install httpd that will load several other things. And then what you want to do is run a command to make sure that it starts. And actually, let's run that command. There it is. And you can see the output. It's telling you that it's being started. Another thing you want to do is tell it that you want that on by default. So that way, if you ever reboot this computer, it'll come back on again. And then the last thing is just make sure that IP cables is updated if you have your firewall running. And the easy way to do that with SunOS version 6 is with the lock it. Would you start the firewall after you? Uh, start Apache or before you start Apache? Well, most people that are running firewalls already have them set up ahead of time. So you'll be running the firewall before starting Apache. Yeah, good question. So the next thing we'd want to do is just make sure that our website is up and running. And what I do is I install a program called Links. L-I-N-X? L-I-N-X, yes. And what that does is let me connect to my machine. Carl, are these commands going to be available for someone to look at later somewhere? Or yes. can we send it to the email list or something like that? Yes. I see he's trying to take notes you know, line by line here. OK. So you're on our mailing list? Uh, so get, you should look know, at that. I get okay, so right. much spam, right. I just throw it away. All right. Yes, I'll tell you what. This is where you can download these from. Let me. Um, so that's carltm.com slash lamp.txt. Yes. If you go there, you'll be able to download this file. Okay, so the thing I want to show you is if you look, we've made a connection and it works. And now I'm on my laptop, which is not, you know, it's different than the virtual server. And you can see that, yeah, I am able to connect. Now I'm getting kind of a funny, you know, it's a test page thing. And I don't like that. So what I will do, I'll run this command to create and edit a file called index.html. And I'm just going to put in that. Carl was here. Real basic file. But the cool thing is, 
this. Now when I go back and connect, I can see that, yeah, this Apache really is working. And through the GUI, that would look like Well, Coach, see, the RoboDog is resolving to your local box. So is that just a name you decided to come up with? Or? Yes, RoboDog okay. is just a name I came up with for my test machine. All right. And this is the one where we're doing all the work and all the installations on the one named RoboDog. Yeah, so that's good. Our Apache is up and running, and there's nothing more we need to do for Apache. Now for the fun part. That's with MySQL. So what you want to do is install two packages, namely MySQL and MySQL Server. And then what we we'll want to do is make sure those are set to run, well, the server package. And then we'll also want to start the server package. special instructions. This is the exception. So the main thing they tell you is remember to set a password for RUD because by default RUD does not have a password, which basically means anybody that can connect to your system can... can okay, when you, say, when you say root, you're talking about root on the operating system level or on the MySQL database? On the MySQL database. All right. yes. Because MySQL has its own set of users and right. passwords for the users that may or may not correspond with operating system users. So what we'll do, we're going to set the password for the root user with this command. Okay. You can see it's MySQL admin, it's root, password top secret. And I'm going to also change that for root on the machine that I'm connecting from, which in this case I'm on RoboDog. Okay, so say that again now. What is this root user? Is that this operating system level now? No, this is still okay, in the. Now, one thing is that I am logged in. Right, okay, so that's what's confusing me. So MySQL has an admin called root, and it looks like you set root password once, and then the next line is you're setting root password a second time, but then you're adding some parameter for a host name. And I, I don't understand what that's doing. What is that helping do? Yes, so what it is, MySQL knows the difference between root and root at global. Okay. So what we're doing is we're setting a password for both of them. All right. And if you have the name set up correctly and you're connected to the network, you will not get an error on that setting. And then what I'd like to do is restart the service after updating the passwords. So that's just the service of high school being restart. And that just guarantees that Okay, you want to add that line to your doc there, just to... Oh, yeah, I could. Just the <coughs> completeness. <laughs> there we go. Now, the next thing we want to do is just run MySQL. And let's see what happens while we go to connect. Well, dash P. And now 
now I'm going to ask for the password. I'll put in that one top secret. And it works. So this is just to show you that when you have the password set up, um, it uses it. And this is what the first thing you want to do when you install MySQL. It's always a good thing. Okay. And let's see. Um, now I'm going to exit this. So I spell it right. Let's say I don't want to have to type the password every time I connect. There's a way to do that. And what I'm going to do, you can see. I would think you would want to require the password every time you connect. Otherwise, you might walk away from the machine, someone else comes in, and they take over. Yes, good point. Yeah, and some of that just depends on your own situation. Um, I just wanted to show you the option that if you do want to have a password applied, but where the user doesn't need to do that, um, this is the way. And then my second thought is this, that if you ever leave a machine exposed or other people can walk up to it, you deserve it. And you've got what access available, yeah. it doesn't matter whether or not your MySQL root password is being requested or not. If they have access to the operating system account as root, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, to do. yeah. You might as well give your machine away. Yes. So the idea is, really, if we're talking security, the best thing is to just never leave a machine, log in with the road account where others can get access to it. So the thing I want to show you now is that if I just type MySQL, but don't add the dash key to ask no password, Hey, it works. Let's me in. So I've got a password, but I don't have to type it in every time. It's a good thing. So, MySQL is now installed. Now for the fun part, which is we need to create a database. And to do this, oh, we need to be in MySQL. So now that we're in MySQL, we just type the command create database and give it a name, which I put in my DB name. And it's saying, hey, it's there. So. But at this point, it's an empty database, I take it. That's right. Yeah, it's an empty database. The other thing we want to do is we want to create that only has access to that database and nothing else. So that means that we can have our web application and if somebody tries to get into one of the other databases, they can't do it. They're, they're limited in what they're able to do. And the way we do that is a rather long command here. What it is is we're going to grant some special access said is we want to grant select, insert, update, delete, create, drop, index, and alter for the MyDB name database and all tables. And we're going to grant it to MyDB user at local host. And that user has a password of MyDB secret. I hope that makes sense. And then after we do that, we also want to flush privileges. Basically means, hey, make sure that or sometimes it caches information in memory, make sure the memory is updated. And then we're going to quit. And, oh, oh yeah, he's, he's not least it twice. So that's good. So now what we want to do is connect to MySQL as that new user, just to make sure that it works the way we do is my 
say we connect later and we don't remember how many tables we've got. All we have to do is type of show tables. It says, hey, you've got one. And it's called my table. And then if you ever forget, hey, what were the names of the fields and what kind of fields were they? Well, you can explain. My table. You'll notice that these commands all end with some semicolon and thinks you you still got more to type. You know, wait until you do type the semicolon. So here's our answer. Well we asked it to explain my table. It's showing us hey you've got three fields. One is named ID, one is named name, one is named notes. Yes. Uh, I have a question. You just said you have to end each command with a semicolon. Yes. What if instead of a semicolon, someone cheats and puts a period or some other... Doesn't take it. Well, no, what it would do is it would accept it, but it would think you've still got more to type. Basically, it doesn't process anything until you type the semicolon. Mm. So it's kind of like a normal computer. You can type all you want, but un until you hit the enter, when you hit the enter, well, then it processes everything you've typed. But if you right. but with MySQL, it's not enough to hit the enter. You've also got to hit a semicolon <coughs> first and then the enter. Is that built into uh, MySQL or is it built into Apache or something else? No, it's all MySQL that we're talking about right now. And it's only MySQL that works that way. And the idea is to let you structure complicated queries without having to have a line so long that your scroll bar uh, looks like a, an eraser or something. This is true, yes. I've written some SQL queries that were very long, and it was easier when I could just type part of it and then hit enter, and then type another part and hit enter, type another part and hit enter. And I would actually make about seven or eight lines out of some of these queries. And then I would end up with the semicolon in matter, and that would make it work. Right. But the good thing is, because I've written it out that way, it's easier to read it and know what's going on. And, and add a bit. I'm sorry. Right? And add a bit. Sometimes you need to change. Oh, yes. If you want to go back and edit it. Right. I think there's a whole different schools of thought on how to format and you know what, how to line space and all that type of thing. And, in a lot of different languages, and I'm sure people have their set ways and their preferred ways of formatting that, you know, draw the rest of us crazy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, with MySQL, I don't know that there's any standard way to do that. Um, you know, some programs require it, uh, Python being one of them. Oh, yeah. But I remember back in the day when Cobol would let you Let's see, I think you need to, to either space over the first six characters or something like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what what I'm saying though is like 
with that create table thing, you put a semicolon at the end on a separate line. And that's if you wanted to add more fields in there, you wouldn't have to modify the last, you know, that type of thing. You could insert more lines in the middle without messing, you know, it's just a formatting convenience type of thing that people might yes. settle on, yeah. Yes. Now, so as we're talking about all this, there is one other option other than semicolon. Now, I was going to talk about this later, but I'll mention it right now. And that's a backslash capital G. And this is just an alternate to the semicolon. Do you notice any difference? This is with semicolon where you get a neat little box and it shows you a grid. When you use a backslash G, you get the same information, but each item has its own column. So it's not a grid, it's a list. So that's the difference between ending something with the semicolon. So let's go back to where we end up with semicolon. Semicolon gives you grid, and then the backslash G gives you a list. Okay, so we now have a table, right? Let's put some data into it. And what you'll see, I've got a pan all ready to go here. We said insert into my table. The name and notes fields, and I want to put in name one and one note. <coughs> and then we'll do the same thing again. This time we're going to insert something different. And now let's see what's in my table. What we're going to do is talk to select asterisk for my table. That means it's hey, Search for and print out everything. Well, it's the asterisk that means everything from my table. And what it's showing me is that hey, you've got three unique things under the ID. And what it is, apparently I entered the name one twice. Not a problem. And then, of course, we got the notice. So I hope that makes sense. It, you do need a special command if you want to insert, uh, insert data. And then the other thing is I'm going to do the backslash capital G where we get a list. Yeah, you can see that again it's the exact same data. Just form it in a different way. Okay, so any questions so far on all this? There's one more thing that I think is important enough that if you're going to work with MySQL, you need to know how to back things up just in case you ever need to restore them later. And all you have to do to back up, because I'm root, I don't need a password to do this. Well, I do need a password, but I've already got it stored. And what you do is tell it here, dump with these options the database by the name of MyDBName, and put that into a file named MyDBName.sql. And what that does, it does a quick backup. The database never went offline. It's nice. You want to see what's in that guy? Uh, there's a few notes at the top, but then, oh, down here we've just got some SQL that will put everything back the way it was. Interesting. And then if you ever did need to restore, if you need to, you would run this command to create the database, and then you would run this command to restore. It sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> what I'll do is log in as root. Root can do pretty much anything. What I'm going to do is drop the 
database. And what do we call it? My DB. I just, the capital Y on my. Oh. So basically, we do not have that database is gone. All we have to do to bring it back is we'll run our, our MySQL admin, create database, hey, that created a database, but it happens to be empty. And now we can run this command and it will restore it. So let's see if that actually works. know how to delete and restore stuff. Well, I should say back on the store. Or move to a different place, right? Yes, you... yes, I've done that a few times. Okay. The database is running on one system, and I want to move somewhere else. This is the easy way to do that. Okay, so any questions about MySQL? Yes. Um, does MySQL work? cooperatively with uh, Oracle or with Progress? Uh, that is, could you use either MySQL or could you use um, one of the standard uh, 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 commercial databases to access the same data? Oracle, you know, is uh, named. Oracle has its own proprietary way to store data. And MySQL has its own proprietary way to store data. Okay, let and me ask a different well. way. Progress is, endorses open systems. Yes. Uh, does Progress work cooperatively with MySQL? And again, that would be another proprietary way that it stores its information. So the idea is you can't use MySQL to read something from Postgre. Uh, no, I'm not sure about that because I wrote an assembler language program to access a proprietary database and to dump it to a comma delimited file which then could be Imported yes, into progress. That's what I was just going to say is that they can't read each other's proprietary formats without but going through uh, something all, like comments. They all speak SQL. And because of that, you could extract the SQL using any of those products and then import using the SQL. But you may have or, to do some interim steps to get that to happen. Yes. 
And then the other way is what you just mentioned using uh, CVS. That's the other way this company uses this too. So, so Carl, using CVS. Uh, repeat again where we can get these commands. Is Carl TM com slash something? Lamp.txt. 